Hey Saints fans, welcome back to the Saints Film Room where today we're going to take a look at both Isaiah and Peyton. Now, because we're looking at two players, this film study is going to be a little bit longer than normal. Apologies for the length, but it just wouldn't be fair for me to have, you know, five, six minutes of each. So be warned, a little bit longer one here today, but hopefully you enjoy it. Also want to say that I stayed up until about 3, 3.30 in the morning to get this out to you at 8 a.m. So all I ask is if you like it, then like it like just go ahead and like that video and drop a comment i don't care what you say say who that love on the saints nation it just helps the channel so let's go ahead and roll the film remember my reminder that i basically put in every video that a single film study that you find on youtube or even an article is not enough to build a full scouting report on a player so don't take what you see today too negative or too positive take it for what it's meant to be a simple representation showing you the fans of the who dad nation where players might be right now and give you some examples in ways that maybe you just don't normally get to see. Let's break down some tape and see where they're at. First one we're going to take a look at today has both Isaiah and Peyton Turner on the field. And sadly, our boy Fossey is going to get a little bit of washed out, but I do like the rep by Peyton. He actually starts off this game pretty strong. You're going to have a lot of mix of up and down reps here. But let's look at this one. Initially, you got a two-arm bull rush. I think he does a good job of converting speed to power. Gets inside, great hands. Look at that extension, throws that left tackle back, never lets him set his anchor and reset. And look at that, get hands on. This is a very good rep by Turner. If you had more of these type of reps consistently, we wouldn't be questioning why he's a DMP last year. This is the type of thing you want to see. Now, it's coming from a two-point stance. He's going to put his hand down just a little bit, but great inside hand placement. Love this. Look at this. These are cocked and locked and ready to launch. Got his forward momentum moving. He's got everything working for him against an LT who is a little high. And center of gravity is a big deal. LT center of gravity is about right there. His center of gravity is about right here. Low man wins. This is just a great example of physics. Offensive and defensive linemen pay attention in your science classes in high school. And then you're going to see that extension. Bam! That's why you get on them sleds every day in practice. Now you got to keep it moving, though. Because the first thing you're going to try as an offensive lineman call a little hop step. You're going to try to hop back and lock in those legs and dig your heels in to try to reset real quick. Little hop sets are a great way to try to recover from a big bull rush. So you got to keep that momentum going. Don't let it stop you. Great job extending the arm. Gets to the quarterback. Sure, he ends up on the ground a little bit, but that's a verified pressure. That's a good play. Now, over on the other side, Isaiah. This is not going to be one of his better reps. Try to cut inside, almost like we're splitting into a little bit of a stunt here. Now, the way he peels off maybe makes it feel like he wasn't trying to split the gap. He is just trying to let the looper come around him. But either way, nothing really there. But it's a good rep by Turner, so we'll start off with that. In this rep, on my notes, I kind of wrote, you know, a little bit sluggish in the short area quickness. But I do like his initial hand usage. I like the hand fighting and the targeting of the hands. When I mean hand fighting and targeting, what exactly am I talking about? Well, let me kind of show you. So he does end up, I feel like, not really getting enough movement here. And I think one thing that I would say I leave this game wanting more from Peyton is fighting with aggression and more suddenness and violence. So first you see a double hand swipe here. So he's trying to swipe both hands away. I have no problem with that. He has a little bit of a miss here, but now you need a redirect and counter. Really good job by this left tackle to set a base, by the way. All right, reset. What are we doing now? He's got his right hand into that left paw of the offensive line. Let's try to get that out the way. And we do. We kind of slam that out the way. But now we've got to make sure that we're redirecting somehow. What else are we doing? So I like the initial hand fighting with in terms of target placement, everything. Even if you miss the swipe, try to get rid of it. Only thing is he's not playing to like the strength that you believe and see that he has. So even though he's doing some of the right moves mechanically, you don't see that force, that aggression, that suddenness, and he doesn't actually end up clearing out. Ends up being a great anchor, great set by the left tackle, and because of the wash, guy gets out. And little things like that, you see Peyton Turner do the right thing from a technical standpoint. It's not perfect by any means, but at the same time, there has to be a result, right? Like, you can do the right action, but if it doesn't get you to the point that you're trying to get to, then what use really is it? And that's the frustrating part about watching Peyton is, Turner's going to have a play where it all lines together and it works great. And then he's going to have a play where he just gets washed out against a guy that you just saw him beat. And you're going to see that in today's film study. And hopefully these are things that continually 
get worked out through him. But let's go ahead and watch some more. All right, so now we're going to have both of them on the field, both lined up in a wide nine alignment. I guess I should pause this real quick. We're not going to go through the entire set, but this wide alignment that would be outside where a tight end is. So just imagine if there was a little tight end right there. Sorry for the E not being readable because I decided to write on the goalpost and a tight end. Wide nine simply refers to the alignment. They're wide outside. So they're both kind of have a similar positioning here and a similar pass rush. But you're going to see initial rep, I think, is good from both sides. Foskey's going to actually try to break inside with a little bit of a stunt, which I actually think he does pretty decent. And we'll watch Peyton on the left side. So let's go ahead and roll it. A couple things to see. One, you kind of have a pressure here by the second round rookie. So, hey, hand clap, because there are a lot of people throwing out a bunch of negative about this guy. Well, that's a, that's not a negative. So we like that. Now let's take a look at Turner on our left side. Initially, I like the first half of his rep. So a little bit of great swipe here. You see him try to use this double swipe quite often. Single swipe, double swipe. You can do it with one hand where the right outside hand tries to collapse this and then you rip underneath it. Or you can try to double swipe and really just try to throw the momentum of that left tackle, get him turned a little bit, and then you're going to cut inside off that swipe. Either way, it can work. Initially, I like the rep. Here, let me get my Madden pin off. Initially, I like the rep. Tries to rip through, and then he tries to go into a spin. I actually think that if he just dedicates and commits to the actual rip through, you'll see him win on the rush up the arc. Swipe. Now he just needs to commit to this, but it's almost like he's trying to second guess himself and do too much, because now he's got that left arm on the inside, and you wouldn't necessarily want to do this spin move like this anyway because you don't have control over the inside arm of the tackle. If you're going to uh, perform an inside spin move, you actually want to attack and get rid of either the right wrist or the right elbow of the tackle. The whole goal is kind of what I showed before. You want to get them turns so that you can cut inside. You have to take their momentum away from them and put them going in the opposite direction as you. The whole point of a swipe I don't want to hit my microphone, is to move them and get past them. So here, it's like he tries to do three moves at once. You're going to watch this. Watch, 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 watch. I don't know why I said that five times. But come on, play. Roll it through. Swipe. Rip. Spin. Honestly, even with the rip, maybe he doesn't get through. But it's almost like a can't get out of your own head situation where he has all these physical tools and he just needs to actually dedicate to using the tool at hand. Watch it one more time. I don't think it's terrible. Again, the swipe, and maybe he isn't attending to kind of get through the rip here, but I think right there, at this point, you've gotten the swipe. You now have got the leverage to the arc. You've got about a step on that left inside foot. What you need to do is take that left arm and rip right through his outside or, yeah, his outside shoulder here and beeline. You want to flatten out. So step one, swipe, done. Step two, rip. Get through, and when you rip, you're going to be right here, and then you want to do what's called flattening out, which means instead of coming through this arc, you want to get to this point right here and beeline it for the quarterback. So get that swipe. You did good on the first part. Now rip through, flatten out, and get that sack, or at least get a pressure, get a hand on. Again, just a, a, a half rep there. Hey, Saints fans, real quick, if you want to support the channel, check out our merch store. Link in the description below. It's RevDeuce.com, but... Check out the Saints podcast section where you can get coolest shirts, coolest cups, coolest hats. Oh, and that hat have you all ready for Easter. Look how crispy it is in the white on white. Support your channel, support film today, support your podcast, RevDudes.com. Hey. All right, this one is, uh, we've had some positive, we've had some meh, and this is going to just be a big negative for me. And this is in the run game. Why do I hate it so daggum much? Because Peyton Turner, who is a large, strong man, just gets bodied by a tight end. I hate this. This is a rep that just makes me want to go, dude, you were too good to do stuff like this. Now, shout out to Big 97. Today's film study is not on 97, but if you want a great example of what Turner should be doing, look at 97 right here. I'm actually going to use it as an example. First thing, great strong inside placement. One, eyes up. Eyes are taking a look into the backfield constantly you got to know where your hands are and trust your body trust your technique that you can do this right here extend bam explosive power sudden we talk about having heavy hands as an offensive and defensive lineman 97's got him right here he's going to engage right into that chest extend it lock out so that he can peak 
right there he's peeking see his helmet look at where that white center line is on that new orleans saints helmet he's not staring at the offensive lineman he's staring at where he needs to go because he's created this extension all he has to do is shed this is what we talk about when we say stack and shed if you ever heard me use that phrase the idea is literally we're going to engage we're going to stack you up we're going to look what's happening in my gap get rid of you move let's go make a play beautiful job 97 does it against a big left tackle 98 doesn't do it against the tight end i got a problem now i'm not trying to turn this into a just hate and bash on peyton turner look at it here other angle see what i'm talking about roach bam stack look around we're peeking we're watching our gap we're maintaining our gap integrity and he's not leaving his gap until he confirms where that ball's going as soon as you see the ball move look at it but he's still in control peeking move around that is fantastic play by the nose tackle. Turner's locked up by a tight end. Again, this is going to feel like this is turning into a hate session, and that's not the intent at all. Simply that this is the type of rep he should dominate, and he will dominate at different times. The inconsistency is what makes Turner so frustrating. Got to be for the defensive line coach. It used to be Ron Nelson. Now we got a new one here in New Orleans. And for Dennis Allen himself, because these are also reps that he'll win. Stuff like this, man, you just can't have. Peyton Turner is too big, too strong to get locked up by 89. No offense to you, Mr. 89, but this just doesn't work. Gets locked inside. Great job by the tight end to turn him out, lock him out. And I will admit that Turner actually helps out Roach here because <laughs> Turner gets in the way of the tackle and Roach is able to clearly uh, go through. But let me just go ahead and tell you, that's not the play design. So, all right, we're back at it again. Another two-arm bull rush attempt. This one obviously coming later from the first, but doesn't go as well. And let me show you why. Left tackle changes some things up. He got smart real quick. Love to see this from backup offensive lineman. It's not meant to be a Chargers film study, but shout out 75. All right, so let's talk about how exactly this breaks down. Initially, fine. Um, not as good. Now, the being the reason being, LT did a little bit of a jump set, got out there, tried to break away some of that space so we couldn't get so much speed into our power so now the bull rush isn't as strong you're going to feel it now you're still going to get some momentum here but remember when i talked about that little hop step it might sound stupid but it works watch this bam see how we we hop back we dig in we straighten our back bulldozed now sit on the ground so what do you do if you're turner here one you got to recognize this jump set coming to you watch 75 bam jump all right he's already here shoot what do we do Shoot your hands. Go ahead and stick with your bull rush. That's fine. But you got to know in your head, we got to have a counter ready because if this bull rush does not work, we need to do something else. A good example of what to do in this situation or maybe an idea of what to do because I'm not going to pretend like I'm Bob Miller. But two-arm bull rush, good, strong, effective. But if you know it's getting stopped or they know you're coming, let's do a push-pull. This is where we can use their momentum to our advantage. So they're coming out to me. Cool. Engage. Bam. He's trying to stop me. Cool. Now what I do? I'm going to reset my feet. Push like I'm trying to bull rush. And then what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab that inside of that shoulder pad. Pull him away. Push, pull. Great technique. Love this. Not enough people actually use this. You got to be strong to do it. But instead, he just tries to stick with his bull rush and try to grind it out. And what you're going to find, offensive linemen. Got the advantage here, man. They're big, they're tall, they're strong, they got length, they usually have weight on you, and if they can get into their drop step, and they can get into that anchor, you're not going to just grind past them, especially in the three seconds it takes for a quarterback to get the ball off. And that's how he ends up on the ground right there. So little things like that that you want to see Turner improve on. Initially, I like it, but obviously, left tackle, he's learned what you're trying to do. You're going to bull rush me, I'm going to come out to greet you, We'll take away some of your speed to power. So now Turner's got to figure out how can we get rid of this. All right, going to line up wide again. Going to get 75 again, who played basically this entire game. We're going to try something different. I like it. I like different. In fact, this is a good rep. Now, it feels like we get a little bit stale towards the second half of it, but he's learning. He's trying to do new things. Now, one, his offensive lineman's getting more aggressive with him. He's noticing all this bull rush. He's like, hey, we're going to, we're going to try to shop that down right now. Peyton Turner in turn, is doing the same thing. One, I like this. His, he's attacking that elbow right there. Look at it. Swipe. I like this. This is good. I want to see stuff like this. And then, 
One arm. Remember I just talked about that? Remember I talked about? Oh, come on. Yes, sir. This is better. This is learning on the go. Good rep so far. Now, ooh, break away. Oh, it's just, it's so close. It just needs to happen a little faster, but good rep. I want to see this type of hand uses. The only thing I would critique is I need it to be more sudden. Come on, move it, move it, move it. He's doing the right thing. Again, hand usage is usually a positive for Turner. I like this rep. He's trying to expect that bull rush again. You come out with him with a double swipe. He's like, whoa, a little bit different here. He tries to reset, but he's not like we're, we're not together. It's not, it's a lot harder to drop into your anchor when you don't have that little piece of 280 pound man right there. So now he's trying to figure out, okay, well, I got to reshoot my hands, lock him out. Love it. Good. Now keep it moving. Get underneath him. Got it. Good rep. That's the type of thing I like to see. The only real critique is it's got to be faster, more aggression. You got to be angry, be nasty, be a dog. But otherwise, I mean, you're seeing as this game went on, it's a good chess match between the two. And you're going to see him win some, lose some. Consistency is going to be the big talking point for Turner, a lot of these reps. But this one, I like. It just needs to be a little bit quicker. All right, let's watch another rep. Uh, this one, I just give him praise, and now I feel like I got to be a little bit negative. All right, so he is changing things up. When we talk about what can you do from a defensive end standpoint, having a tool set, such a big deal. This one's coming through with a rip, but, sir, he got you. Uh, he he kind of just kind of gets caught in the spider web here. One thing that I'd love to see in this particular rep, you don't always have to come through with the flurry of moves. And, in fact, one negative that you might see – for some players is they try to do too much just like a wide receiver we talk about timing being such a big deal from the wide receiver position you can't just sit there and try two seconds of release moves to get off the line of scrimmage it's the same thing with the defensive end you know as you as an edge player you got to get to the quarterback the quickest route is a to b not 16 steps there so sometimes one move does it but if you're going to do that move you better make sure that that move works really really well so what's the negatives with this rip attempt one i don't necessarily like his angle of attack but if you look here one ducking your head down never no no you need to see where you're going young man don't duck your head second off he doesn't attack that outside shoulder he comes up straight up and then tries to duck in i want you to hit that arc wide immediately the one advantage you do have is quickness versus this guy and then he tries to rip through and that rip just isn't a really strong rip again he ducked his whole body down it kind of became like this little condensed little target instead of being a forceful, sudden. You're going to hear me use those words a lot. Even look at the rip. The rip itself is not this forceful oof. It's a pee. I, I don't know why I went Michael Jackson there, but that's what happens when you do film studies at 2 in the morning. But you see what I'm saying? Like The biggest issue is a lot of his moves sometimes, even if he's doing the right thing, where's that aggression? Where's that suddenness? you got to be angry when you're playing this mission. you got to play forceful because the truth is in a lot of ways and maybe i'm being biased here because that's what i played offensive line have an advantage they're bigger they're stronger and a lot of times they have more length the advantage that you have is technique suddenness quickness and the fact that you are the aggressor now if you study offensive line play go study do Mayweather. they talk about strike leverage drive finish as an offensive lineman because they like to teach that pass protection isn't passive and that's the same thing from a defensive end standpoint you have got to become an aggressive and you can't have these willy-nilly we you've got to rip through him you want to dedicate to this move you want to be there then be there do it watch it one more time again I don't think it's a bad choice. And I think that he can actually beat this left tackle. But if you're going to do that, don't duck in. If you're going to rip through and attack that outside shoulder, then get in there and rip through. Because it's that forceful motion that's going to dislodge his hand. It's that forceful motion that at least is going to get you underneath him. And a good thing to happen, if you're doing this right, if you're cutting into him, one thing that he can end up doing is his arm gets right around your neck. Now, I'm not saying I want you to get into a sleeper hold, but you know what that ends up being? Well, if you're going around the arc and he's got you by the neck, sir, that's holding. So either way, be aggressive. The more aggressive you are, the more forceful you are, the more chance you have of making something happen. But that's just one guy's opinion. Let's keep moving. It's not all negative, ladies and gentlemen. Again, one thing I liked about Turner in this game is something didn't work. Let's go to something else. Let's make. Let's find my advantage. And here we found it. The play where he actually has the sack fumble, one Isaiah's on the opposite side. We'll talk about him in a second. But we've been playing outside all day. And one thing that I do think that Turner has started to develop that is really nice is a pass rush plan. The idea behind that is 
knowing not only to attack this rep in this series, but we're building to something. Well, if you look at all, basically every rep we've looked at, he's been attacking outside. He's been lining up as a wide nine, and he's been forcing this guy to be either into a jump set or coming into a vertical. Now we're going to show that. So we're going to show that outside move, but then we're going to break it inside. And what did I just say a few reps ago? What advantage do you have over a guy who's 6'4", 200 and, well, in this case, 330 pounds, even 310 pounds? Speed. You're probably faster. Short area quickness. And that's what you get here. So even though we talk about consistency being an issue with Turner, there are definitely reps where you can see it clicks for him. And I love these reps. That's what you get here. Show that outside. And then look at the strength of this plant. This is good technique. Single foot plant launch. He's not playing around. There's no ball stepping here. Bam. And I love the over-the-top swim to make sure that he clears the inside arm of the left tackle. And then it's free loop. Oh, bam. I'll take that all day long. I love me some forced fumbles. Yes, turnovers. Yes, I've been needing those in my life. Thank you. One more time. Beautiful. See, this is good. So it's just one rep might be bad, but it's like he's learning on the fly. And if he would just be confident in himself, this is an aggressive rep. Look at him. Outside play it fast. He's not taking any breaks, man. Look, I don't even know if he takes a breath. The man's like Buster Rhymes in that Chris Brown verse. He's just going, just going and going. If he has this type of suddenness and aggression, you're going to see him win more reps. It is no coincidence that he wins this rep with suddenness and aggression. Hand usage is pretty good too. Look, I said, there's that swipe again over the top, clears that arm out. Beautiful rep. It's just, can he get to where he's doing this more often and trusting in himself instead of second guessing himself on some of these reps? And that's why I said, when you watch Turner, it can be a little frustrating because you'll watch him get completely tied up by a tight end. It's like he forgets how to dominate his rep and then he'll come in and do stuff like this. And this is just this move, like this setup where a couple of drives worth, we're going through bull rushes and one arms. And then you come back with this, this is going to beat top end left tackles in the NFL. This is not because he's beating a backup. This is what an effective pass rush plan looks like. I mean, you're going to beat a lot of left tackles in the game like that. Now I just got to do it more consistently. So anyway, good rep. Let's look at Isaiah real quick because this is not one of his better reps, but we're not going to just harp on negatives. He has some good rushes earlier. Again, consistency here. Tries a one-arm rush. I do like that he consistently fights. His feet are always moving. But uh, again, he probably needs to work on counters as well, where we talk about young defensive linemen needing to get better. But I love the one-arm rush. Only thing I would say is forklift technique. For those that know what the forklift technique is, you're going to take their wrist, put your hand on it, drive it up. That's the forklift. So basically, where he's got that wrist right there, you want to, same as you would be going through like a bull rush, where you want to extend and lock out, same idea, but you're going to put that hand up in the sky. And that really throws off, one, their center of gravity. Two, obviously, they're not able to use that to stop you, to get force on you, and it puts you in a better position of control. So little things like that that he can improve on, but good center of gravity. He's got him on his back foot. I mean, this is a pretty decent drive. He just kind of slows down, loses momentum towards the end. But it's not a terrible rep. It's one of those that I would say he wins the beginning of the rep. He just needs to get better at finishing the rep. So decent rep by Isaiah, not just not amazing. Another Turner rep, and again, a little bit later here, just a few plays, uh, next drive. And again, when I talk about needing to be sudden and aggressive, you can just look. He's not as sudden and aggressive here. It's almost like it's tentative. Look at this inside rip attempt. Look, this LT just got beat inside. He's not just going to let you waltz in there now. You want to get in there? You better go after it. Doesn't really go after it. So he's going to come through. Watch this. Little oof rip. Remember, hey, I, I said you kind of need to, you really need to ram your arm through that. The whole idea of the rip is you kind of want to catch the arm in right there on your bicep. You want to rip it through. You're basically trying to get their arm the hell out the way. So you can't come in there like, hee hee. You actually have to rip through him. That's the point of it being called a rip move. And here he just kind of gets caught in the web. You know, it's, it's, um, I need that aggression, that violence. That same thing that you just showed me where you knew that you were going to whoop his tail, do it again. And he just doesn't have it, this rep, and he gets called. And especially when you try to, like, get this, like, half spin move and you give him your back, well, hell, it's like the MMA, man. Once you give him your back, it's over. I mean, your, your barbecue chicken, your toast is done, and uh, there's nothing you're going to do about that. So, again, if you're going to rip through this, I need a powerful rip. I, I want to see you break through. Not this, oh, there's a guy there, so let me stop halfway and try to, do a weird 
belly backflop spin move. All right, now we're back into the W column. So I'd say Peyton Turner had a solid day today. Not amazing, but solid. This is another one where we see him use a different type of moveset, expanding that toolbox where that LT's adjusted what he's done before. Let's try something new. So we're going to come through a three-point stance. Great double swipe, better rip through, and he forces the quarterback out the pocket. This is a pretty actually damn good rep by Peyton Turner. Need more of this. And great swipe. Rip through, still not as aggressive. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I'm going to have tons of comments in the comment section below about why I'm doing Michael Jackson hee hees. But it, it's not as aggressive, but he still is forceful. He's sudden. Again, me using the words of the day. Look at him come out of his stance. Look at his launch. I really love this. He's going to have a little hop step to make sure that he attacks that outside. Remember I talked about the importance of attacking that half side if you're wanting to do stuff like this? Exactly what he does. That little launch right there, that little jump, that's to get to the outside. Two-arm swipe to collapse the arm. Perfect. Guy still got a little bit of you. Rip through it. Perfect. Only thing that's going to happen there is he's going to hold you to stop you if you got a free release. Now you got to flatten. Now it's not his fault that the left guard's free there. Either way, he forces the quarterback out the pocket. Great play by him. Good rush. This is a pressure. This should go down in the in the books as a pressure. Doesn't turn into a sack, but it does turn into an incomplete play thanks to a very large man about to hurt you if you are number two there. Stick. All right, so now Isaiah's going to have the side that Turner was on. You're going to see him going against the same guy, which I think is useful to see like opponents. We're going to look at two more reps just because this film study is already very long and I'm very long-winded apparently later it gets. But this is another one where we talk about him needing to get better hand usage. Remember the previous rep I talked about needing to have that play strength and to use different techniques. So one, he's trying a one-arm bull rush, a long arm. If you're going to do that, one thing that I would say is you need to be more leaning forward so that you can extend. So if you're going to do a one-arm, you typically don't want to just do it straight up one. You want to extend your reach. So the way that you do that is like this. You turn. See how my fist just got closer to your face? That's crazy. That's three-dimensional. So now that you're enjoying my IMAX theater joke, think about it. If you're going to do that, then you got to make sure that you don't let him get his hands locked in on you, which is actually what ends up happening. You see left tackle has got big old bear paw clutched. Now, you might not be able to tell as well in this, but let me just go ahead and tell you exactly what's happening. Because from an offensive line standpoint, if I was – grading number 75 in this game one of the things that i'm going to check in my little box as a player evaluator is grip strength because that's what he's got right here that's grip strength see how he's literally got him by this and he's not letting go yeah that's grip strength now as a player you need to break this you have now failed your one arm didn't get it because he shot in real quick good play there now how do you get rid of it you can try several different techniques one be sudden and aggressive remember that forklift technique Take your arm, shove it straight up, and break it. Other thing you can do, take it, use it as a sledgehammer, bang it down. Either way, there's several things you can do. You can do the swipe, forklift. You can try to get out of it. Hell, you can try to turn it into another move where you try to get in for holding and use the grip strength against him. Either way, you got to do something. But uh, <laughs> for the most part, he just gets stonewalled here trying to do a one-arm bull rush because he doesn't have the link to immediately lock out on that LT. LT does a fantastic do uh, job to not only have a pretty good set here as he's dropping in, but also great punch, great set. I mean, some really good technical rep by the LT there. So if, they, if this is what happens to you, you got to find a way to break that. And as you can see, as the play develops, he's just kind of struggling to do like this weird dance where we're each gripping each other's throats. And if you're the LT, you're happy about that. Cool. I'll do the who's stronger dance because the offensive line is typically going to win. So next rep. All right, so I chose to put this one at the end because this is, in my opinion, the worst play by Isaiah in the entire game. And yes, this touchdown's on him. And I want to explain why, even though he's a second round pick that you bring in to be a pass rusher, this is a perfect example why he's nowhere near starting. Because when you play for a Dennis Allen defense, if you've ever taken the time to study his defenses, which obviously being Saints fans, you've seen it for a long time now. He wants his defensive ends to be extremely good against the run. And when I mean extremely good, when you play the role of the MEOLS, in man on the line of scrimmage, your job is multifaceted. You better be willing and able to defend these type of plays. So let's talk about why he just completely bombs it. We'll let you play at full speed here. And I'm actually going to use the other end zone angle to talk about how he messes this one up. 
because that touchdown is 100% on Isaiah and nobody else. All right, so when it comes to this, your job, you're not going to get blocked here because this play is looking like it's going to the right. That's the whole point. And in fact, this is probably meant to be a run option. It's either going to get handed off or we're going to keep it. Hence the blocker coming across. Hence this guy staring at Isaiah, like staring. And here's the key. Positioning here is not bad. This part is not bad, but ball's handed off. Where are his eyes? Sir, that ball's been gone a whole second. What are you staring at? Like the, the running back's not even faking it. Like the running back's literally got his hands out like, hey, who wants to mumbo? Again, that's why I shouldn't do film studies at 2, 3 in the morning. I get stupid. Besides me being goofy, that's the problem. That man has now created a 10-yard wow. That's a, I mean, that's a touchdown. So his role as a backside defender on these type of plays, when you're looking at run options, if you're looking at counters, your job is, one, you don't want to overcommit. So overcommitting would be to force yourself down this line. If you do that, really easy decision for the quarterback to keep it and pull. Other thing you want to do is you want to sit, which he did the first part right, but then your whole job is to make sure that this doesn't happen. So actually, what's kind of crazy here is Stick makes a decision that maybe a lot of people don't make because you actually have the defensive end in a good position. Now, he is already starting to commit to that inside. But truthfully, he's actually in a decent position if he's not overcommitting and if he reads this properly. Your eyes should be on the football this whole time. Now, we can argue that this guy maybe is distracting him or whatever. But the point is, his eyes the entire time are staring at a running back who doesn't have a ball. He has got to know where the ball is going and be aware of where plays are designed to be. Now, again, it's preseason. You didn't have a full week of film study. You didn't know that this is something they like to do. Whatever, whatever. But this is still a good rep example of why he's not ready. Now, shout out to Nani, the other rookie, who does a good job to break past and actually have some penetration on that opposite side. But for Isaiah, a big key is, and one thing that Marcus Davenport did incredibly well was defend these type of plays. Isaiah, if you're going to fill those shoes, you got to do the same thing. You can't get beaten like this. You've got to be able to read that that ball is not there. And you've got to know that we have got to at least force him backwards, not forwards, and let your guys get some help in. So these all guys get stunned too, by the way. So we need to talk about how you got fooled, you got fooled, I mean, there's a lot of fooling going around. But in terms of whose responsibility it is to defend this edge, that guy, and that's why he's not ready yet. But at the same time, you've seen some good reps in this game, probably better than you expected. At least I hope so. But that's a bad one. We're going to end it on a bad one. Yeah, here's what it is. All right, so y'all have gotten to watch some Peyton Turner, got some watching Isaiah, and I really hope you take from this that there's neither of these guys are pure negative, but both of them are needing to improve and need more consistency. I actually leave this game thinking that Isaiah did better than I thought he did. And I thought Turner did better than I thought he did as a whole. He was just less consistent than I thought he was. And Isaiah was actually just straight up better because going by the game the first time, watching DA tear into him and chew him out and stuff, I just thought he was abysmal every rep. And he didn't win every rep, far from it. But he also didn't look terrible. And you can see some of the traits. He just clearly needs to refine his technique. Hand uses needs to get better for the NFL. He definitely needs to get better play strength for the NFL. Hopefully that comes in time. As far as Turner goes, Turner just needs to be consistent. And the biggest thing I can say for him, the words I've overused today, be sudden, be aggressive. Whether it's his hand usage, his footwork, anything, the man just needs to attack with a ferocity every single play that he shows on the plays that he wins. And it's like he comes into some of these reps knowing that he's about to dominate, and damn it, he does. But he needs to have that mentality every rep. Is that something that he can do? I hope so. But I'm curious to see what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know. Hope you enjoyed the film study. If you did, please, 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 I ask everybody, like the video and subscribe to the channel. That actually helps out quite a bit. And if you leave a comment, believe it or not, that helps out too. So if you enjoyed yourself, I hope you have an amazing day. I'll catch you later. Who that? God bless. Let me know what you want to see for the next film study. Yeah, do that.